Good morning, afternoon or evening. Depends on when and where you are watching it from. Welcome to my presentation on reinforcement learning meets database query optimization. Have you ever found yourself in a position or seen in your lab or office that someone is shouting towards the DBA, I mean database administrators, because of the slow performance in information retrieval and you know it's not the ISP to take the blame for it? Yes, it could be none of their faults. But the problem with the internal mechanism of query optimization of the DBMS they are using. Okay, I am Enamul Hawk from the Data Systems Group, and today I'm going to present the paper titled Learning to Optimize Joint Queries with Deep Reinforcement Learning by Sanjay, Jonghang, Kane, Joseph, and Ion where they have successfully applied deep reinforcement learning at, uh, at optimizing SQL joins and claiming that this technique executes up to 10 times faster than classical dynamic programs and 10,000 times faster than exhaustive enumeration. Okay, let's begin with the background. The basic components of a DBMS are shown here. As you can see, life of a query starts from the end user and it goes through the client communication manager, then parser. Parser is just like for any programming languages. Here it is for SQL. Then it goes to the query rewriting, query optimizer, and plan executor. In a simple diagram, it can be shown like that. But for complex one, like MySQL server, also have the same kind of components, like connection pool, then SQL interface, uh, parser, and it goes all the way to the optimizer. Uh, the optimizer then um, generates a plan for execution. Let's explain the functionality of the query optimizer with a simple example. Say you have three tables, employee, salary, and tax. You want to calculate um, you, uh, the total tax owned by all managers, like manager one employees, for these three tables using a wire clause which is saying that employee position must be salary position, they should be equal, tax in the country and the salary country, there should be equal, and of course, employee position should be manager one. So we can see that we need to join these three tables to get the answer. So why, or how can we do that, right? And basically, here the problem starts because it can be done in many ways, and, and for big queries, many 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 ways like for this case uh, option one scan employees first and then you can look up salaries and taxes or option two build a lookup table on taxes and then salaries and then scan the employees or in option three you could uh, first sort the employees by the position then combine the information let's get a closer look at the where clause here. We assume the three relations are E, S, and T. To show you how many ways we can join them, let's draw two query trees. These, uh, these trees basically represent the execution plan of a query, where you have joins here, and also you can see the selection operator. From the left tree, we can see that either we can start from bottom by joining E and S, then T, or from the right tree, we can first join S and T first, and then finally E. Now, you probably have the obvious question. 
are not they the same yes you can ask the question but the answer is no they are not because from execution point of view how many rows they need to read how many rows to return in the sub queries how much memory used etc are very important factors which influence the query execution time that is information retrieval time from the database this is what we can consider as cost and they can be way different than one another in terms of the cost but how, if you want to minimize this cost, because that is what our objective is, we have to see how many ways or how many trees are there. But the number of possible arrangement is exponential. The SQL query optimization has been studied in the database community for almost 40 years, dating all the way back from System R's classical dynamic programming approach. The problem of join ordering is one of the core problems in query optimization. Despite the problem's rich history, there is still a continuous stream of research ongoing to better understand the performance of join optimizers with multi-join queries or very large queries, say, in, in the enterprise data lakes. The dominant algorithms authors compare the algorithms with are uh, left deep, which uh, maximize the index uses, right deep, which maximize the hash table reuse, zigzag, it is basically the combination of left and right, uh, right deep, uh, then the greedy, exploit linear cost models, IKKBZ, exploit the study schemas, and GEQO, which is a genetic algorithms in the Postgres database. The core approach most of them follow are based on dynamic programming. Let's explain that briefly. In our running example of tax, tax calculation, we consider J like is a function of uh, say R, R uh, to denote the cost of accessing a base relation, say R. And J T1, T2, the cost of joining T1 and T2. This is the cost model uh, that we assume a database management system has built in as a deterministic scoring function. The classical left deep uh, DP approach first calculates the cost of optimally accessing the three base relations. So base relations are say here E, S and T and then put the results in the table. Then it builds off this and enumerates all two relations say when calculating the best cost to join ES uh, it looks up the relevant previously computed results like uh, this and pushes the row back in, uh, in the table to be uh, in the table similarly it goes with the other two relations and finally get the best uh, cost of joining all three doubles. This is done by taking the minimum over all possible left div combinations of two relations and of course the base relations. Here we see J second operand is always a base relation. Like S only where the left could be intermediate joints results like E and T. Um, this algorithm has exponential complexity in the number of relations, which is why it's used a maximum for 10 to 15 queries, not uh, more than that. Uh, sorry, 10 to 15 relations in a query. Reinforcement learning uh, basically is a subfield of machine learning that teaches an agent and that agent also learns about how to choose an action um, from its action space within an environment in order to maximize rewards over time. Uh, RL algorithms utilizes neural network, exploration policy, filters, memory, etc. Here 
uh, if this is a simple tree for our RL algorithms, we can look at model free, then queue learning, queue learning with neural network that is DQL, which has been used by the authors of this paper. I'm not going uh, into the details of the theory, uh, but in short, queue learning is a value based technique where the inputs are state and action, uh, and they use a queue table to represent the action value to finally output the queue values, uh, from which we can also um, get the optimal actions. Um, uh, so uh, that means the policy. On the other hand, uh, DQN, uh, deep uh, Q uh, learning and uh, network learning uh, uses neural network and it does not require actions as input rather states are inserted um, states are inserted in batches and as output we get the Q values um, Q values for each action in the respective states let's now look how they used reinforcement learning to tackle this joint query optimization problem they called it deep query and for that uh, reinforcement learning natural formulation comes as state set of tables joined so far action table to join next and reward negative of estimated cost and the symbols they used in the paper are uh, g which is a query graph uh, uh, that can also be used as uh, to represent the state in the mdp C, a join, this is an action. G prime, the resultant query graph after applying a join. And Jesse, a, a cost model that scores joins. Until now, without reinforcement learning um, and with uh, DQN or reinforcement learning, uh, there have been improvements. Like 40 years of heuristics, um, but now may, we can minimize the prior research heuristics. Before that, there was no sharing across instances, no feedback, only only in the ad hoc basis. But now efficiently share uh, information across planning instances and incorporate feedback, uh, feedback from the real execution. That's a big improvement, of course. Now let's look at the notion of reward or cost here. In our running example, if we apply graph contraction which is stated as uh, pick two vertices connected by an edge, merge the vertices taking the union of their incident edges. Here um, we have uh, employee salary edge green and the salary tax edge which is pink, merging E and C, uh, E and S uh, basically um, uh, becomes SE, then SE and T. Uh, to make set say to make se the cost was c1 uh, 104 unit and to make set uh, the cost was c2 which is uh, 202 unit and this is the join we have done in greedy approach if cost of making es is 104 and cost of T, uh, making TS is 115, the algorithm might choose 104, that is ES, and then join T. But that might result in overall 306, which is not optimal. But if someone choose TS first, um, TS um, first, despite the cost of making TS is 115, but to make TSE, could be just 45 added to that and which is uh, which might be overall 160 unit and that is how we can get the optimal so we need an algorithm which can predict this future rewards or cost in this sense uh, and of course dqn was their answer For representation in DQN, we need to extract features for the states and actions. Since neural uh, net was used to represent the Q of GC, it is essential to feed a states G and actions C into the network as fixed length uh, feature vectors. 
So DQ's um, featureization scheme is pretty simple. Just one hot vector where you uh, use to encode. Uh, as we can see, so if this is our um, so example query and we have employee post and sal uh, salary. So all um, the set of all the attributes present in the query graph out of all attributes in the schema can be presented like this. Like in the employee table, we had ID, name, rank. Then in the P title, P, um, P rank, P code, they all can be put here in one, 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 one. Uh, that means they all present. The participating attributes from the left hand side, like AL, uh, where you have in the left, we can see uh, the employees on the right hand side position. So in the left hand side, employee ID, employee name, and employee rank, these three are one, others are not present. For post, rank, title, and code, these three are also present here. So we, we, this can be considered as E join P uh, in the features. And um, if we now add the S, the S, the, I mean the salary, uh, the S uh, comes with um, the salary code and um, salary amount, so one and one, and they can also be joined here. In another example, uh, if it is mentioned in the clause that employee ID should be greater than 200, uh, then selectivity is used. Selectivity basically refers to the probability that any row will satisfy a predicate that is true. So here the predicate is employee ID is greater than zero uh, in our case. So it, 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 uh, it will return 20% because 20% um, of the records from the employee table will be true uh, if we, uh, if that satisfies this uh, predicate, this condition that employee ID is greater than 200. So the selectivity uh, uh, of EI.ID, uh, this attribute will be 0.2 instead of 1. Besides, uh, type of join information also can be coded. Uh, if we add this at the end, say whether it's an index join or a hash join. Uh, if it is index join, we can uh, use a 1 at the front. And if it is hash join, we can add 1 at the bottom. Um, and besides, we are also using this concatenation operator uh, uh, for the um, concatenation of the physical operator. Uh, these sequences, along with the cost reward, are fed into our DQN to get the Q approx, from which optimal uh, policy can be extracted. Uh, animated example of this filtration can be shown here. Say so this is a state zero, where already we have T0 and T4 added. And, uh, and which is um, indicated in the sequence. Here in this way, we have this one for T0 and this one for T4. Then there is an action A1 which is basically the pick T8. So T8 comes into the picture and we add in the feature one. Same way we can add, um, pick T1 is another action. So T1 goes here and here is the, um, in the vector, we put one. And of course we calculate the reward, um, which is basically um, the um, negative cost here. Let's look at the evaluation of uh, how these algorithms actually work. For the evaluation, uh, they used join order benchmark, uh, which is basically known as JOB, which is a very new uh, benchmarking technique. So, and, uh, and also they used the IMDB database, um, movie database which has um, 21 tables uh, 33 query templates and 113 queries and the join size in those queries range from 4 to 17 relations 
uh, that means average relations per query. Uh, the authors also uh, designed three cost models. Um, uh, the cost model one, which is index mostly, models a main memory database and encourages index join. Then cost model two is hybrid hash, uh, which considers only hash joins and nested loop joins with a limited memory, with a, it has a memory budget. Then cost three, uh, hash reuse, um, accounts for the reuse of already built-in hash tables, um, so Spark or Postgres, uh, um, the integrating this system into uh, the software into that system uh, was considered here. Uh, the costs are designed to have uh, more non-linearity, like posing challenges to static uh, strategies, uh, DQ of our robustness. To the cost model that means uh, all uh, that means uh, that it prioritizes plans tailored to the structure of the cost model workload and the physical design uh, all of the algorithms considered uh, join ordering without Cartesian product so EX that means exhausted a dynamic program that exhaustively enumerates all join plans avoiding Cartesian products is an optimal baseline so the results were, which are reported here in terms of the suboptimality with respect to EX, that is the cost of the algorithm uh, divided by the cost of the uh, exhausted. Uh, they have done a four-fold cross-validation to ensure DQ is only evaluated on queries not seen in the training workload like they had trained on 80 queries and tested on 33 as uh, mentioned before they calculated the mean suboptimality of the queries that means cost uh, for the plan from each algorithm divided with the cost plan from the optimal so the lower is better so if we see the results for uh, here for these three cost models uh, on cost model 1, DQ is average 1.32, that is 1.32 times way away from the optimal plans. Hmm. Um, across all the models, DQ is competitive, of course it is, uh, with the optimal solution without uh, prior knowledge of the index structure. Uh, except uh, was the fixed dynamic programs, for instance, um, the left deep produces good plan in CM1, uh, but that also struggles in, uh, you see, in, in CM2 and CM3. Likewise, the right deep plans are, of course, uh, uncompetitive in the uh, in 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 um, in co uh, cost model one, but they are getting better in the cost model uh, two and three. But one thing can be concluded here that a learning based optimizer are more robust than hand designed algorithms and can adapt to changes in workload data or cost models. On top of that, it is seen in this figure, uh, DQ produces good plans. So DQ here is this color at the, at the right hand side. So DQ produces, um, of course, good plans at much faster speed than classical dynamic programs, even when uh, the number of relations increased. So this and this, uh, the speed is uh, shown here. Uh, overall performance shows that the cost suboptimality with respect to optimal plans, the classic dynamic program here, uh, the left dip, fails on the cost model 2 and 3 where DQ excels. Here basically uh, both of them did good, but in 2 and 3, um, cost model um, uh, DQ excels execution and uh, optimization 
latency uh, of GQ and Postgres. Uh, uh, Postgres on job is shown here. Each point is a query executed by uh, native Postgres uh, in the x-axis, the Postgres, and uh, the DQ on the y-axis. Results uh, below the y line, that means this line, uh, results below the y line, uh, y equal to x line represents a speed up. That means in these cases, the, uh, the DQ's speed was better than uh, the Postgres one. Uh, optimization latency is the time taken for uh, like time taken for the full planning pipeline, not just the join ordering. And here we see initially it took longer time. Initially it took longer time uh, because of the training, but in the later it picks up uh, and um, uh, in, the, in optimization and also in the execution time. And it, it went up to the speed almost three times than the other one. Um, the next question uh, they investigated was how much training data does DQ need to become effective? This is relevant to the um, RL, uh, the machine learning part. Uh, so they varied uh, the number of training queries given to DQ and plot uh, the um, and plotted uh, the mean log relative cost using uh, the cost validation. It shows that DQ requires about 60 to um, 80 training queries to become competitive and can match uh, the quick peak, mm, quick peak where we are actually comparing with this two, uh, quick peak uh, around 30. They also found they could train DQ on small queries and test on larger ones as uh, long as relations are all uh, well covered. Finally, they tested how DQ can overcome an inaccurate cost model by fine tuning with feedback data. They used epsilon 0.1 for exploration. And after fine tuning, uh, as you can see here, uh, after, uh, after the fine tuning, DQ emits a plan that executes uh, in 20 seconds, uh, outperforming both Postgres and its original uh, previous performance. Uh, this sh shows true run times are useful in correcting faulty cost model and cardinality estimates. And interestingly, uh, they also found that training a version of DQ using only real run times failed to converge to a reasonable model. And this suggests uh, the learning high level features from inexpensive samples um, uh, from the cost model uh, is of course a be a bene beneficial. That's interesting. Okay, now let's go to the conclusion. Machine learning or basically reinforcement learning might replace programmed heuristics with efficient and data-driven strategies. And that is what they tried to prove, uh, they tried to prove uh, through this um, research. They also showed that uh, it can generalize to unseen queries, extendable to more complex expressions, um, and adapt to workload and hardware characteristics, uh, efficient planning, uh, order of magnitude, very faster. And they're planning uh, that in the future research, end-to-end -end learning query optimizer, if uh, possible, they want to build one. So here, uh, uh, the references and credits I take and help from. Uh, and, um, thank you. Thank you everyone for uh, listening to my presentation.